fantasy. Now, there are two viaducts, literally within a stone's throw of each other, built by two separate companies. Now this one, this was built by the Midland Railway on the Settle to Carlisle railway line, built around 1875. Now this takes the name of Smardale Viaduct. This is well in use, but there's another one, about a 15 minute brisk walk in that direction, that was built around the same time, that's got a similar name, Smardale Gill Viaduct, now disused. And that's the one that I'm gonna check out in today's video. But it'd be rude not to come and have a look at this beautiful grand structure. Ninety foot high. It was designed. It's one of Bouches, Thomas Bouches, designed by him, and uh, opened in eighteen sixty-one. Fourteen stone arches, and it was part of the South Durham and Lancashire Union Railway that crossed over the Pennines, carrying mineral, carrying coke from Barrow in West Cumberland there to go make some iron straight across the other side in the northeast. Terrific bit of engineering in this quite remote little area. At its peak it carried one million tons and the line was closed after the steel making and iron making industry came to an end around 1962. And generally, when you see these grand, magnificent stone structures, not far will be a lime kiln, and there is one still available to see today, just over there. That's where we're going to next. to the, the kiln. It's 
to a little point to make out that this area has been inhabited by humans for a very long time going way back into the medieval days and there's evidence of that with pillow mounds and they were raised beds of earth artificial rabbit warrens with a rock bed underneath which prevented the rabbits from digging down so the so the person who owned that stretch of land or whatever could block off entrances and capture hares and, and rabbits for the fur and to make a nice stew maybe and that was a kind of early sort of way of, of farming but by doing the rabbits plus there's a little bridge down there as well which is a pack horse bridge that footpath i was walking along before is sort of the traditional old footpath that's been there for maybe hundreds of years that goes over that bridge this was a cut through many many moons ago and to think that people have walked so many miles to get from one side to the other is absolutely fascinating through this gill and gill actually gill means like a a, a valley or a ravine where it encloses in down it doesn't necessarily mean all the time that there's a body of water like a beck or a stream that or a river that goes uh, underneath but in this case there is a beck smardale beck but this dramatic landscape of all the limestone all coming down into this little gill which is a Norse word we spell it G-I-L-L -L now but originally I think it was G-H-Y-L-L -L. it's beautiful absolutely beautiful and the fauna the flowers the species some that are quite rare are littered all across this bank and cutting it truly is a magnificent little spot and now this is looked after by the Northern Viaduct Trust. Well done to you guys. One day we'll catch up. I love this. Do you know what to think? That this, this rock here is limestone. And this is millions of years old. And it's made predominantly of old sea shells and similar bones of sea animals that were laid down millions of years ago and compressed with the earth changing and moving to form this rock bits of sand and all sorts of bits are in there impurities but it's just to think that our viaducts and stone buildings all across the land are made from seashells and the like for us to get industry on the move. Thank you. You've got to say thank you. And all these massive cuttings and rocks that you see, even on the motorways, when you're traveling along and you go through a cutting, you can see all the limestone. You're actually going through what was once tropical seas where prehistoric animals would have roamed like woolly mammoths across this area, especially like with the Yorkshire Dales. And over time, things change, lift and shift. And then we harness this, not only to build things, but we burn it, a rock, we burn it to an inch of its life, get rid of the impurities and we're left with lime. And we can make quick lime, we can use that for cement, for concrete, for mortar, we can do it for putting down, for gardening, it's found in toothpaste, it's found in plasterboard. It's a useful tool, versatile tool, having this rock here. And we're still using it today. We're still quarrying this stuff out today to keep building this country and moving forward using an ancient rock and seashells. That's a different outlook, isn't it? I'll put this back here. And to get lime, you need a lime kiln. And this is a lime kiln, Smardale lime kiln. So they would have put the limestone through the top there when they quarried it and they would have shoveled coal or coke in between it which would have burnt it and that burning process went on for many many weeks and as it lowered down and it rendered down into that fine white powder as it broke down you had to stoke holes here and then they would have shoveled them out onto waiting sort of wagons, rail wagons to move them all across wherever they required and needed and it's very indicative it's very common to find a lime kiln very close up to a railway line 
That's quite a magnificent looking kiln. burning of lime well you have the Romans to thank for that they sort of brought the idea into the country and we have plenty of limestone in this country and then it sort of developed and adapted way into the 17th century stone used to be carried on the canals as well it's amazing to think isn't it? but that's a great structure you can see all the ruins of the lime kiln as it came to its end of days no longer required. They realised later on, as I said, that lime was actually very good for soil, for growing arable crops. All these ruins along here. Right, I continue my venture, my journey, to set a pair of abandoned railway houses, which would have, or did have, uh, an important role to this railway line all across here in that direction. surprises when you do these videos and to think that the railway line is here and the house is is just there uh, it must have had some significance with the with the quarry and the line itself without a shadow of a doubt the Christmases would have been spent here birthdays and grief maybe perhaps and one day someone turned the back on there locked the door walked down the garden path at the front maybe to get the last train with all their belongings to leave the area. Now I didn't find much information about this, these houses, a little bit sparse. So if you know, it'd be nice if you should join in, as always, comment down below. But this gate here isn't locked and people have been walking in. So I think it'd be worth me having a little adventure inside. Not the house, but the garden. Oh, I'd so buy these and do them up and live here. Oh. You can see that the roof is pretty shattered and knackered. I'll walk it down the side. It's very overgrown. Not inviting. Especially with a crow above. <laughs> oh well, let's go in. Oh wow. Well. It was obviously uh, well, like very shallow gardens, yards, with these outhouses built. There's about three, two or three sections to each one. Completely thrown me. But I suppose you've got all that in the front, haven't you? So you can grow your veggies and your flowers in the front and ignore the back. But I bet it was grim in the winter around the back of the air. Well, let's continue my journey. So from like one massive, beautiful 1800s built 
viaduct to this stone little bridge here. All built probably from the local stone, the same stone, limestone, that I've been telling you about throughout this journey. This is where my journey ends, this pack horse bridge here. Now I'll lend you have it on the internet that potentially this has been crossed over by humans and horses since the medieval period, if not even sooner, possibly the Romans. And here it is today. Over time, it's expanded. It's got stronger and bigger as the means of traffic has gone over. But what's significant about this is that this bridge is the forefather route to get from one side of these Pennines to the other, in essence, to the railway line that was built that kind of replaced that. Not much has changed around this area over the hundred or so years. It's still just as beautiful as ever. Now we have the pleasure and the privilege of walking over the footpaths, the footprints and the shadows of our medieval forefathers and ladies and horses. Thank you.